I'm working on a peg head for a, a Selmer style guitar. Um, I've got, it's a walnut neck and uh, there's a real thin strip of maple running up the middle just for decoration. Um, I've got the ebony veneer glued to the peg head. It's got this really cool light spot running right up the center so that's kind of neat and obviously I've got it cut out to the shape I want it to be. So now I'm going to put in the holes for the tuners and then make the string ramps. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill the tuner holes. I've marked on both sides where I want the topmost tuner to be and put some white paint on it just so I could see the pen marks a little better on the uh, walnut. And I've got this neat factory made jig here that helps me align all the tuner holes. Um, what I do is put this on the side of the peg head and line up the hole with the pen mark that I made on the white paint and then clamp this down and drill right down through each of these holes. The cool thing with this is it adjusts to different thicknesses of peg heads. And this is the same process I would use on both a steel string slotted head or a classical guitar. If I'm making a classical guitar, these center bushings come out and then I have room for holes that are the width of a classical guitar roller. But in this case it's steel strings and all I need is to drill a quarter inch diameter hole so the bushing stays. So there we are, six holes. Now I'll make the string slots. Um, I've marked on the back of the peg head where I want the ends of the slots to be. And uh, they're going to be a half inch wide and whatever length this is, I don't know, about three and a half inches. Um, so what I'm going to do where I've got these marks is drill pilot holes and then I will connect the edges of the holes and cut out the waste wood. Okay, now I'll connect the uh, outer edges of the, the holes. So use a scroll saw now and cut inside of those lines. Well, I've got the size of the slots looking pretty flat now. So the next thing to do is to hollow out the string ramps. Um, probably doesn't show up too well, but I've marked with a pencil where I want the lines to be. Um, the ramps on a Selmer style guitar are a little different than on a classical guitar. They get a lot wider down at the bottom. Usually on a classical guitar, the ramp is pretty much the same width as the slot. Whereas on this guitar, the slot's a half inch wide and the, the bottom of the ramp is actually going to be about three quarters of an inch. It gives it a little different look, but uh, serves a very important purpose. It allows the strings to travel from the nut to the tuners without rubbing against the uh, peg head veneer. Yeah. 
okay that's looking pretty good probably do a little bit of clean up on it still but uh, that's the general idea so I've got the slots all cleaned up and the ramps um, are pretty symmetrical so the only thing I have left to do on the peg head now is to cut out a little spot for the truss rod adjustment um, the original Selmer guitars of course didn't have truss rods but when I decided to start building these styles of guitars many years ago I talked to a couple of pretty prominent built, uh, players of gypsy guitar music and they both suggested that if I was going to make any improvement on the original design it would be to put a truss rod in the neck so I pretty much always include a truss rod there's not a lot of space here for the adjustment with an allen wrench but there's enough so that's what I'm going to do Alright, now I'll see if I've carved away enough so the truss rod sits here and yeah, the Allen wrench reaches and if I've gotten enough away from the, the walls of the slot, uh, just barely, I want to take just a little bit more off right here and right here so the Allen wrench can swing a little bit farther. Okay, I'll try this one more time with the truss rod clamped in place so it won't give me any trouble. So now I can insert the Allen wrench and get it to turn far enough where I can adjust in both directions so I'm all set. You can see over here as I tighten the Allen wrench the top rod of this double truss rod starts poking up above the uh, surface of the fretboard. Obviously that can't happen once the fretboard is installed so instead that tension is transmitted to the peg head end of the neck and it pushes the neck downward. That's how the truss rod works. And this one's called a, a double action truss rod because it actually has two rods and if you turn the truss rod the other direction it causes the lower rod to push downward so you could bring the the action or the, the bend of the neck upward if you wanted to. It doesn't happen very often but it's nice to have it available and this is a really rigid system so I use these most of the time. Alright so that's it for the peg head. I'll make the truss rod cover sometime um, now all I'm going to do is shape the heel and then I can get the neck glued onto the body of the guitar.